This video is going to help you decide which method you want to use to solve systems of linear equations. And this is a question I get asked a lot. Why on earth are there three different ways to solve these systems? Are they just trying to do this to confuse us? I get it. So let's try and help you come up with some strategies for deciding which method to use. So first of all, you need to understand that two linear equations that relate the same two variables are called a system of linear equations here. So a solution to that system is just literally an ordered pair that satisfies both equations. So let's take a look at what these problems look like. So here is a problem here that just ask us to solve using any method. And this is sort of overwhelming when we first take a look at it because we're wondering, oh my goodness, am I gonna use substitution, elimination, should I graph it, what should I do? Okay, so before we address that, let's talk about um, exactly what these look like graphically. So when we're talking about a solution is really that one point where these two linear equations meet. So in other words, we're talking about that right there. This point right here is going to be one unique solution and you can see that's where the two lines are intersecting. So this we would say has one unique solution and it's consistent and independent. If they are parallel lines, you will see here that they're never going to touch, they're never going to cross, so therefore it actually has no solution. Um, they're literally not going to intersect, there's not a coordinate that's going to work for both of the equations. Now this last one's a little bit tricky. You'll notice you're saying, hmm, it looks like there's only one line on this graph. Why is there only one line? It's not that there's one line. It's that we're literally looking at a system of equations that's literally the exact same line. So we plot the first line and then we plot the same line right on top of it. And you can see that there are all of these solutions. So all of these coordinates and literally I could keep drawing coordinates on this line forever and that's why we say it has infinitely many solutions. So it's literally the exact same line. Too many solutions to count. We can't even account for them all. Okay, so um, here we see that we have three graphs. And again, we can say that B has one unique solution. And again, that solution is going to be this point right there. So that point where it intersects, whatever that X and Y is, that's going to satisfy both of our equations. C is going to have no solutions, because as you can see, they're parallel lines, they're never going to intersect. And then A is going to have infinitely many solutions. And literally, this means that it's the exact same line on top of each other. Okay, so there's three ways to solve these. Let's talk about um, why you pick certain ones, because believe it or not, there is sort of a method to the madness on, are we gonna use substitution to solve? Are we gonna graph to solve? Or are we gonna use elimination to solve? And I wanna give you some um, examples here. Okay, so I've kind of come up with some uh, systems of equations, and I want to just point out why I chose to use these different methods in each one. So let's start with the one of what I think could be the easiest, and that's graphing. You'll notice that in this graphing scenario here, I was given two equations in y equals mx plus b form, or slope-intercept form. So when I'm already given those, it's really easy to just graph those and see where they're going to intersect. I could use my graphing calculator to do this. I could do it by hand, etc. Okay, substitution and elimination get a little bit tricky. So here's what I want to um, draw your eyes to. First of all, if I've got a y equals 2 scenario, or even I've got this scenario down here on the bottom where it says y equals 2x, plus six. These are good scenarios where I know that I can literally take this for y and substitute it into the bottom equation. I can take this two, substitute it into the bottom equation. These, in my opinion, would be a good argument for substitution. For the um, equation up here on the top of substitution, you'll notice that I've got this x where I have only a one 
coefficient for that term. So in that case, I could easily move my negative 7y over to the other side by adding 7y to both sides, and then I would end up with x equals 7y plus 2, which, allow, which would allow me to substitute that right into x. So that's another good uh, argument for using substitution for those. On the elimination side, what we are looking for on that side is for the coefficients to maybe be factors of each other. So you'll notice that here I've got 21 down at the bottom and I have a seven right above it. So I know that I can multiply this top equation by three. And when I do that, I'm gonna end up with a negative 21y and a positive 21y. And when I combine those together, I'm going to end up with a zero y or my y's are going to cancel out, which is just gonna leave me with x's and I'm gonna be able to solve for that. On the bottom equation here, you will see that I've got already got a positive x and a negative x. Again, right away I can see that this is awesome. These are going to make 0x. I don't have to write 0x. And then I'm going to end up with 14y equals negative 4 and be able to solve for y and then plug that back in to solve for x. This is another great example of elimination where elimination would be helpful. Um, the last one is, again, don't forget about our x terms here. I can see that 24 is a multiple of 3, or 3 is a factor of 24. And again, I could go ahead and multiply the top equation by 8, which would give me a 24x and a negative 24x, which are going to make 0x or cancel out. Sometimes we refer to that as canceling. So this is kind of your strategy for if you want to use substitution, graphing, or elimination. Here's the key, though. The key is that you have to get the same answer no matter which method you use. So all methods are going to lead to that one answer, or if it has infinite, infinitely many solutions, then maybe those many answers. But all methods are going to lead you to the same answer. So don't be stressed out thinking about, well, which one is the perfect one? If you, It's just that choosing some methods to solve is going to actually cause you to do more work uh, than maybe you needed to do if you chose one of the other methods. Okay, so again, I just want to talk about which method I would use. So in this one right here, I look right away and I see I've got 7 and 21. I could also adjust my x's so that I could get a negative 24x, a positive 24x, or a negative 21y and a positive 21y. So in my opinion, I would use elimination for this um, systems of equations to solve. For this one, right away, I see that I have two equations in y equals mx plus b form. So this one I would use by graphing. I would solve by graphing this equation. And then lastly, I see that I've got an x equals something. And because I have an x equals something, I know that I can easily substitute this in for the x there and solve for my y and go for there. So in this case, I would use substitution. I hope you found this video helpful and you've got a better idea on how to decide which method you want to use to solve systems of equations.